Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Hey, I'm Andrew Herman, currently 24 years old. My record is 2-0, fighting at a bank tower MMA in Thailand, but originally I'm from the UK. Yeah, probably in England, it's not like America. We probably don't have a sports culture as much, but I was always good at sports and I was always athletic and probably just played football like most kids in England. Maybe just did some martial arts here and there. But then eventually when I trained at BCA, the gym back home for the first time, I just got good at it quick. I think I competed in like six months of starting and the first few guys I fought were pretty high level at amateur in the UK and from there things kind of just took off pretty quick. So I wouldn't really say I have a sporting background, but I just kind of jumped in the deep end when I started training MMA. Yeah, the, well, the first amateur fight I had, it's a while ago now, eh? but um, yeah, I fought a guy who was the UK, at the time he was the gold medalist wrestler in the UK, and I was 0-0, and I think he had a few fights, so I was kind of expecting to lose. Everyone was on this guy's side, especially it was his hometown event as well. So the crowd was going crazy for him. I remember just hearing like so many boos for myself. And then, um, yeah, we went in. I beat him in like 60 seconds. And it was like a good, it was a good win because it showed not just everyone else, but also my own team that although we don't come from a, from a big team, we were able to beat a guy of such status. So that would probably be my first, it's hard to even remember so far back to be honest, but. That was the first amateur fight I had, and then it kind of was just the same story every time, fighting guys with a lot more experience and then just beating them. So, um, yeah, like I said, we're a, it was a smaller team that I was from, but they did a good job just investing in me and having my back throughout. So, yeah, good times. Yeah, to be honest, I don't think, when I, when I was fighting these people, I didn't really know who they were or their record. I don't think records mean that much. Of course, experience plays a part in the game, right? Like, you know that, but at the end of the day, it's, who performs best on the night. And throughout my career, even my first pro fight, the guy had, I think, hundreds of Muay Thai fights and he had like world titles. But it doesn't really make a difference when, I think if your preparation is correct and you believe in your own skills, then sometimes fighters with a big record, they can actually lose because they're less hungry or they have injuries or they're just kind of out of the game a bit. Whereas I just believed in myself and the people that were investing their time and effort into me and I just trusted my skills. So yeah, even in like the first few amateur fights, I wouldn't really listen to what anyone has to say other than my coaches and my team because they're the ones that see the work that gets put in and the results. So yeah, like underdog, underdog aspects and like records, I don't pay too much attention to. And when I'm on the other side of it, when I've got like 20 fights and I'm fighting a guy who's coming up, I won't be underestimating them or thinking that I'm gonna win just because of my record. I know it's about the work you put in and the way that you perform on the night. Yeah, so like I said, in England, we don't have too much of a sports culture, but I started probably in boxing, maybe when I was 14, 15 years old. I got good at it pretty quick, but I wasn't, I think it was at that age where I wasn't fully committed to an athlete career. So I kind of maybe just got distracted a bit and then went off and did other, th other things like you would when you're that age. And then when I came back to training, I started training at Barnet Combat Academy, which, like I said, was not an MMA gym, but essentially we started training MMA there with one of my best friends, Elias, who's one of my coaches now back home, and Shab's the owner of that gym. We kind of just figured things out and started fighting MMA. And um, yeah, like I think in hindsight, it was a good thing that I wasn't from a big gym originally because I learned how to figure things out for myself and think for myself. And basically the, t the three of us, me, Elias and Shabs, figured out how to prepare for these MMA fights like on a, pretty, on a pretty good stage in the UK. And like I said, they had no experience with weight cutting, no experience with MMA. Uh, and now that I'm in a big gym, I can kind of take all of that and I have world-class coaches and everything here to, to use as well. So I think it's a good mix. Yeah, I mean, so it's, a long, it's a long story, but the, uh, pretty much, I think after COVID, the UK was in a pretty bad state in terms of just getting fights and, and the regional scene was kind of a bit shaky. So yeah, I just made a decision I was gonna move somewhere and 
compete and join a bigger team. But my, the owner of my gym back home, VCA, they kind of suggested to me it was time to branch out and join a bigger team anyway, because I kind of hit a ceiling of where I was at. So um, it just kind of worked out. I was, I was considering going to Russia initially, and then the war happened in Russia. So that was off the table and then some other places. But as I was making these decisions, the UK started to open up for travel and then Bang Tower just opened. So I, I had met George like a long, long time ago in Thailand and I saw he was opening up Bang Tower. So I just messaged him and said, hey, I'm gonna come out. And I just came out and the rest just happened. Yeah, probably, I mean, everyone wants to be here, right? There's the beach and like nice places to go out. But for me, the only decision making factor for me was the quality of training and coaches, honestly. Like if this place was in Siberia, I would have I would have went there, you know? Um, because really, for me, all I do is train and prepare for these fights here. So it was, it was hard, definitely, it was a hard decision because you move into a place, you don't know anyone, you're leaving all your friends and loved ones from back home behind, like my family. But I just knew it was the right decision to make, to to make the right moves for my career and then provide for everyone I do care about. It's like, I, I see it as, yeah, I've left them now, but long term it will pay off for all of us, not just myself. So yeah, of course it's tough sometimes and you miss people, but it's definitely worth it. You know, like having the fights and the performances that I have, I feel it would only happen if I'm training at Bangtao. So it was worth it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's very different to where I'm, what I'm used to because like I said, in our gym, maybe there's like two or three guys that I'd spar and train with on a regular basis, and that's it. And then here, not only do we have like probably almost 100 people on the mats at times, but these guys are like UFC fighters, high level wrestlers, jujitsu guys. So you're getting the best guys in the world come in every single day. But of course, of course, this is the reason why people come here, right? You jump so much levels. If I need a specific training partner for a certain opponent, there's a whole group of guys, I can just grab someone that I need. Whereas in England, it was a lot harder to do that. And then the best thing, in my opinion, is the coaching just, like in England, we don't wrestle, right? It's something that we just don't have. So learning wrestling from Frank and George and just MMA grappling in general from Brad, Alex, everyone. Um, I feel my game, I feel maybe like in the UK, we were covering everything, but we were kind of papering over cracks and just making up for aspects which we didn't really have. But now we just have everything at our disposal here. So I feel I'm in the right place to become the best fighter in the world within a few years. And not just in one area of fighting, but in every area, grappling, striking, wrestling, I feel this is the right place to be. Yeah, I think it's a common thing, right? You see people get distracted. There's a lot of distractions anywhere, but especially somewhere like here, right? It's a holiday destination and, and everything. But yeah, but I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes, of course, like we all can get like we're all guys that we can get distracted or you can maybe, especially after a fight, you can probably just go on the wrong path a bit. But I just feel for me, I'm in a place where I wasn't able to compete for a long time when I was in the UK. And now I feel I just want to make up for lost time and get myself to the UFC and beat everyone in my division. So I know that I could go and do some stupid stuff and have fun. But at the end of the day, if it's going to hinder the timeline of me fighting, I, I do not want to do that. Like I'm just, I couldn't really give you a reason why, but I just want to fight often and I want to fight everyone. So I don't really think, I think maybe like other people, they, they come out here for the training, but there are other things they prefer to do. Whereas I genuinely prefer to train, even though it's hard and sometimes your body's broken down, you, you just want to stay at home or whatever. I just know that like I'm on a path to becoming the best fighter in the world and nothing else really interests me other than that. I guess, like sometimes the, the, the most I would do is go back home and see my family and friends after fights. That's like kind of my time to reset. But if anything, if I was to go out and do something, I'd get FOMO from being in the gym because I know the guys that we're all competing with, they're doing the same. So yeah, I'd be probably just more missing out on the future that I want to provide for my friends and family and everyone. And I know that happens by putting in the work in the gym and then stepping in the cage and winning. So that's the most exciting thing that I can do for myself right now. Yeah, like, like I said, to, for me personally, I don't really see a difference, especially in the UK, the amateur rule set and the pro rule set is very similar. The level of fighters that I was fighting at amateur were also probably better than a lot of the pros that are out there anyway. So I, I just felt like it was another fight, to be honest, bro. Like, I guess, yeah, my first MMA bout that was pro was in Bali for the IFL. 
and just felt the same as usual. The only difference probably was that was my first fight with George in my corner. It was my first fight properly representing Bang Tao. And I just felt good. I think when you, when you fight, people go into different mindsets. I was just, an, I had an empty mind and I was ready to just take the guy out. And then that's what happened. So yeah, like obviously there are some differences in the rule sets, like you can throw elbows or you can do certain submissions. But to me, it was all the same. Yeah, it was funny because after, well, after the first fight in the IFL, it was like I fought, spent a bit of time, but then came back a few days later and then basically went straight back into training camp. And uh, because there was no injuries in the fight or anything, we just got straight back to it, made some adjustments that we felt were needed from the last bout. Went into the fight with the, the guy on Shangu fight night and Kind of similar thing, bro. He was, he, I think he had like maybe six or seven fights, so he was more experienced on paper. But then I, I feel in his mind, he knew he was outmatched and he tried to, he did some things like he tried to get in my head before the fight, which was smart on his part because if you're outmatched, but you can get someone to fight emotional, maybe you have a chance, but uh, it didn't work. I don't think that stuff works on me anyway. Like I'm pretty focused on what I'm gonna do. So yeah, we just went in. I just remember we went into the fight and his demeanor changed once we stepped into the cage, which is definitely what I expected. It looked like when I stepped in, he looked like he saw a ghost. And then I could just tell by his body language, he was super, super tense. So I remember like I rocked him with the right hand and he stumbled. And then when I went in to land a few more shots, he kind of just made a bit of a scramble and, and tried to hold on to me. And I would probably, I don't have too much memories from the fight because I was in flow state. I was just focused on what I was doing. But I do remember when he grabbed me, he was just squeezing on so tight as if not really he was trying to win, he was just trying to hold on and not get knocked out. So then when we, when we took him to the ground, he just, he was looking for a, he was looking for a way out. And I felt obviously like there was a big size difference between me and him as well. There was no way he was getting up. So I locked him up with the choke and then that was it. So yeah, about two minutes. But uh, it's funny that like, people always make these comments, right? Like, oh, you finished him so quick. But when you're in the fight, time doesn't really exist. Like to me, that felt like half an hour, you know, because you're just in the moment thinking about everything. So to me, like, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed finishing them quick or excited to finish them quick. Like I just go in with an empty mind and let the fight play out naturally. And that's just how it played out. I just know from competing and training that it takes something to get you in the right mindset, right? And if you're thinking when you're in the fight, it's too late. Like you can't have a thought and then try and pull it off. It has to be just your body reacts. So when I step into the cage, I just I probably have some like little preparations I do mentally and just have a blank mind. I'm not thinking about doing anything. I just let my body kind of react naturally to what it's going to do. And that's why when you go into the fight, I don't have any memories really of it. Maybe it's like a couple of small bits, but Oftentimes, like, it's funny, in the fights, people will tell me about what happened in the fight and I have no idea what happens. It happened with, uh, I think Frank was asking me, and I thought I like slipped this punch and counted him, but it never happens. But it's because you're so in the moment, you're just not thinking about things. So, um, yeah, it's a weird experience. You probably have to just compete and feel it for yourself to understand it. It's very hard to explain with words, but I just feel when you enter into the cage, there's no room for thinking about what you're gonna do or what you have done. You have to just be in the moment. And I'm sure people have different ways to get themselves to that point, but I just feel when I step into the cage, I'm comfortable and I'm meant to be there. So things just kind of fall into place. Yeah, so right now I'm just focused on the next fight because if I don't win this, then the rest of it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna make sure I win this next fight and then I just wanna stay active. There are some things like in the, in the future, like different promotions that are interested. So I just want to win this fight, fight again maybe in a couple of months. And then by the end of the year, we'll see what my record is, but I feel within one or two years, I'll be within one year or maybe a bit more, I'll be on the edge of being in the UFC. This is what I'm looking at. So I'm just looking to fight everyone right now. I don't really care about rankings or records or or like the promotion or whatever. I just want to fight everyone in my division and then it will happen naturally. Like I said, I'm not trying to chase anything specific. I'm just on the path that I'm on. And I feel, I, just from what I can see, I feel within one or two years, I'll be in the UFC. Yeah. Now I just like to thank anyone that is following my path, uh, whether they know me personally or not, from Thailand, England, Bali, wherever they're from. 
just thank you for supporting and, and watching. And I just look forward to having the next fight, putting on a performance and just doing it over and over.